Namaste. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to be making any more videos, but we've had an important breakthrough, a huge discovery, hiding right out of the open. And I want to share this with you because it's about the entire future course of our work. You probably have experienced, or if you have an experience, you know someone who's experienced this, that you grind away for years and years doing sadhana, and there's no real substantial change in consciousness. Isn't it? It's happened to me. It's happened to everyone I know in the spiritual path. Well, we finally broke through and debugged the process and discovered why it wasn't working. And it's so simple and so obvious that after you hear it, you're going to go, my God, why didn't I think of it? The Upanishads give the secrets of self-realization. But the Upanishads have to be taught in a certain environment to have their effect. If they're taught or presented outside of that environment, nothing substantial changes. There's no tangible feeling of self-realization, satisfaction, completion. So, we have... I mean, it's really obvious. If you see this video about the structure of the Vedic literatures, the Upanishads, which are the only part of the Vedas that deal exclusively with non-duality, are part of the Aranyakas. The Aranyakas are the part of the Vedic literature that has to be taught in the forest. That's what Aranyaka means. And who is teaching and who is staying in the forest? Only the renunciants, only the sannyasis, only those who are fully dedicated to spiritual life and don't have any engagement outside of it. This is what's required. This is the environment in which the Upanishads can be taught successfully. And I want to tell you something. If you can create this environment, and if you can study and practice the Upanishads in that environment, the effect is immediate. The result is instant. You get self-realized. But if you try to mix the Upanishads with other Vedic literatures like the Puranas or Tantras or any of the Vedic literatures that deal with duality, and if you try to practice them in an atmosphere of mixed non-duality and duality, nothing will happen. I mean, sure, You'll collect lots of knowledge or information. You'll do lots of mantras and pujas and so many other things. But your consciousness will not change. Oh yeah, you may get flashes. Because how can you be in that en environment? Or how can you be in that study and without something happening? The Vedas are powerful. But all you will get is flashes. You won't get the full thing that you're thirsty for. You won't get the complete bliss. You won't get the satisfaction that you're looking for, satisfaction of the heart. So this is what everybody's doing wrong. All the people who are presenting Upanishads and Vedanta and non-dual teachings, for example, on YouTube, 
are doing it wrong. We were doing it wrong. And even though I am living in the proper environment for Vedas and Upanishadic realization, and I was getting the results, still there were constant problems culminating in over Christmas holidays, these rascals who came to disrupt our online discussion group, our online teaching. Why? It was a reaction. It was a lesson. It was a symptom. Just like when you go to the doctor and he checks you and he says, oh, you have symptoms of such and such, we better do tests and find out what's wrong. When we were getting disruption from outside sources, it was because this is a symptom. This is a lesson. It's a sign that something is wrong. What was wrong? We were trying to mix non-dual teachings of the Upanishads with duality by making those teachings public. Upanishads should never be taught in public. And this is why you have these online teachers and maybe they're giving seminars and something or having an ashram somewhere, you know. But none of their disciples are becoming realized. Why? Because they're mixing the Upanishads with duality. Say you're a, a, a big guru, you know, a big sannyasi teaching in some organization. So what's happening? You have a building. You have a temple. You have lots of people involved. The building costs money. The temple has to be maintained and operated, and there's ongoing expenses. So that means you have to collect money from the people who are coming and taking advantage of it. This is all wrong. This is mixed mixed. Meditation. On the one hand, you're trying to present Upanishads, but on the other hand, you have to make your rent. You have to pay your mortgage. You have to pay your operating expenses for the temple and so on. Feed all those devotees. Maintain the ashram. How are you going to do it without money? So you wind up creating a business, isn't it? You have accounts. Maybe you have to incorporate. Maybe you have to get a tax exemption. Maybe you have to get permits from the government. You have to uh, create what's called a fictitious business name. <laughs> this is all Maya. But hearing the Upanishads in a secluded setting, either alone or in association only with realized people or people who are purely on the path without doing any kind of sense gratification, without doing any kind of business, without any distractions, without any contamination of duality from outside, that gives instant results. Instant. You feel inside this warm, beautiful, like golden radiance coming from the heart and suffusing everything with bliss. Huh? It's not anything you're doing that's causing it. It's because you removed all the distractions and now you can simply see what is. You can simply be aware of Brahman which is the self, your self, which has been there all along. But because it was covered over by all this duality, oh, I have a big temple, oh, I have to meet my monthly numbers, oh, I have to manage this and do that and go here. How can you maintain your focus? Three aspects of sadhana. Shravanam, hearing, Mananam, contemplating. Nididhyasanam. This third one, nididhyasanam, means 
staying absorbed in the realization. So by hearing and contemplating the Upanishads, you may get some short realization. But then it goes away because you cover it again. But if you get that realization, which can happen in a very short time, and then you stay in it, nididhyasana, asana means sit. <laughs> so if you get the realization and then sit there, don't go anywhere, don't move, don't do anything, then what happens? You remain happy. You remain in self-realization. You remain enlightened. You don't fall down. You stay happy. You stay satisfied. This is self-realization. This is what we all really want. And the problem is we're not prepared to pay the price for it because we are still attached to duality. We're attached to that big temple. We're attached to our big position in some organization. We're attached to our big monthly budget. We're attached to those disciples. We're attached to those classes and going here and there and being honored and received and so It's all bullshit. It's all a distraction from the real thing, which is remaining in seclusion, absorbed in the Upanishads. This will give us what we want. This will give us the actual result that's described everywhere in the scriptures, but which, let's be honest now, nobody is getting. So this is the problem. And so we have debugged it. And we are experiencing it here without any distractions Notice how silent it is. I made this room, a silent room, with sound baffles on all the walls and the ceiling. Actually, I made it for recording, but man, it's great for meditation too. <laughs> because there's no sound from outside coming. Not even birds. Nothing. So this is what you need to remain. Nididhyasana, sitting, seated, steady in self-realization. And this is what brings the satisfaction, the deep satisfaction of the heart that comes from self-realization. And so we are going to start a program soon for selected sadhus with the proper qualifications to come and live and stay in this bubble, nididhyasana. Sit down and stay in the realization, in the enlightenment, for long enough that you can go back to your place and recreate it there. Then, ultimately, wherever you go, you will bring that realization with you in your heart. But first, you have to go through the training. And so we're going to establish this program. I'm going to be posting little videos and watch the community uh, tab on the channel page. I'm going to be posting there too with important links of how you can get involved in this program. It's the only program like this I've ever seen anywhere because everybody is compromising. We're the only ones who aren't. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivai.